Hey, it's, a, it's always fun to see each and every one of you. You know, it's kind of funny. I, I get tickled. I, I probably shouldn't even talk about this, so don't cut my mic off. But it's so funny as we get started, we kind of, we're kind of a slow starting group. You know, we come and there's a small and then something will take place and you look and there's more. And then you go into praise and worship and you look and there's more. And it's like, just come on in. Just come on in. Everybody come on in. So I'm so glad to see each and every one of you. So I'll be praying about that, by the way. We'll just get, we'll get everybody here to start with bright and early, right? <laughs> they can encourage me. Hey, listen, uh, I think I welcomed you already. You know, I get a little carried away, but there's something. I, believe it or not, there's something I want to encourage each and every one of us in. We did, we did it just a little, a little while back. But man, this morning, when I was in my word, the Lord kept showing me peace. 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 Lord, what is it that I allow to steal my peace? What is it, Lord, that, that I hold on to? I, something about this morning that I think he showed me this, that it's like the most important thing. Does, does that, does that, does that kind of make sense? I want to have peace in whatever it is. So how do I have peace? I trust him to lead me and guide me. Guide me, Lord. Let me hear from you, Father God. Let me honor you in my conversation and my thought and my deed, Lord God. I want to stay in your peace. And you know, if we allow him to do that, we can have peace in the most turmoil you've ever seen. We can have peace in the worst circumstance you've ever been part of. We can still have that peace that only comes from trusting God. Now, traditionally left alone without God's spirit, I'm not a real peaceful person. <laughs> when I will allow his spirit to guide me, though, I can rest in him and know that he is the orchestrator of all if I allow him to. I can interfere. He will allow me to interfere in what he has orchestrated. But if I can be still and allow God to lead me and to guide me, I can have peace in whatever's taking place. I can be unaffected by it, even though it's all, it can be the worst chaos. And to show the love of God, I want to be strong enough in him and trust him enough that in the middle of chaos that somebody would look and say, how is he so peaceful sitting there with all of this going on. That's the peace that I want to pursue. That's the peace that he shows me that comes with his love. You know, I'm always reminded, almost every Sunday morning when we're talking about, just for those who love me will obey my teachings. I don't want to obey his teachings for the sake of obeying his teachings. I want to obey his teachings out of love because I want to be more like him. And in that comes the peace that can only come from him. And you know, with that peace comes joy. With that peace comes freedom. With that peace comes the understanding and the reminder that the things of this world just aren't that important. That the peace of God the Father is to me. So I want to encourage you this week. Kind of look in your life again and say, what is it that I'm allowing to steal my peace? What is it that I'm allowing to interfere in my peace that I'm allowing? And release that to the Lord. Just release it to the Lord. You know, um, it, it, I, I don't want to interfere in what's coming this morning. You know, Jeff and I don't have conversation. But even in praise and worship, what a great time to come up to this altar. And if, if it's dawned on you, things that you're allowing to steal your peace, just come up here and stand before the Lord and truly worship. Just truly worship as though nobody else was in this room. And bring whatever it is. Oh, Lord, I bring it to this altar and I worship you. And if you're really brave, come stand in the middle of this Holy Spirit fire that's represented right here. Thank you for being here this morning. Welcome. It got real quiet. I didn't mean for it to. But I do want the joy and the peace of the Lord about me in everything that I do. And you know what? I'm even going to practice it. 
I'm always going to try to listen to him and let him guide me and let him go. But when something goes wrong, I'm going to practice keeping me in check and standing in the peace that God has to offer. Can y'all join me in that this week and the rest of our lives that we could do that, that we could honor him that way? Good. Thank you for being here. Remember, if it's your first time here, you've never heard me say this. So welcome to home. We have a cry room in the corner for nursing infants, and our restrooms are out in the hallway and to the right. But before all of that, we just want to honor God and welcome you here. Join me in prayer. Father God, Abba, you're, you're, you're such a good, good God. And you told us in your word that when we came together in your name that you would be there. And we thank you, Lord, that you were here. We thank you that you are faithful to your word, Lord God. We thank you that you share your word with us, Lord, and you instill it in our hearts. We ask, Father, that the Holy Spirit be loosed in this place today. Let us each hear in our own language what it is, those, that thing that you have for us today, that truth that you have for us, Lord. Holy Spirit, be loosed in here. Have your way with healing and with strength and with peace, and with joy, with love, with all of the things that you have for us. We love you in this place. We trust you, Father God, and say, have your way, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we trust you. You have never done anything to lose my trust. Meanwhile, I have no idea why I trust me. I've failed me over and over and over. You said if any of you are weary or heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. We say yes. We step into your rest of trusting you. Thank you for the peace that is beyond what we understand when we declare, I don't need to understand. We trust.
house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise.
God be the glory I'll trade Ashes for beauty I'll trade Joy for my morning I'll trade To God be the glory To God be the glory I'll trade Strength for my weakness I'll trade Pain for my healing I'll trade Let this be my story To God be the glory
He is so mighty, so faithful, so generous. We're reminded in our praise and worship that the table has been set. The table's been set for you, for me, individually. The table has been set. and We've got a Redeemer who climbed up on that cross for you and I when we were at our worst, not when we're at our best. He did it for the worst of us. He did it for the worst of me. He did it for the worst of you. He climbed up on that cross. And, and the table has been set. And when, when we think about the table that's been set, this is the divine exchange that I see for today would be that I bring to him simply all of me. Bring him all of me. And in return, he says, walk away in what I have for you and that's grace and that's mercy and that's love and that's righteousness and that's holiness not because of anything that I did other than saying here's all of me Lord so when we we kind of paraphrase that to I want all in Father let this be the day of I want all in Lord I want all you've got for me, Lord. And in exchange for it, I give you all of me. Can we just let this be the day that we're all in? That we say, I'm all in, Lord. Not part of me. I'm not holding on. Lord, I'm not going to hold on to those things that allow to steal my peace. I'm bringing it all, Father. I want all in. Father God, we thank you, O Lord. We thank you for this table being set, Lord. We thank you that you stood true to the test to redeem each and every one of us, Lord. Strengthen us this day, Father, to receive what you have for each of us, Lord. Let our hearts be, Lord, that we want all in. We want everything that you've got for us, Lord. And we want to leave us with you, Father God. And when we walk away, we want to walk in everything that you've, that you've arranged for us and you place about us, oh Lord. Have your way, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. the tithe and the offering. Can y'all sing that bridge again? Yeah, just a second. Father, we come declaring who you are by how we give. We declare who you are by how we give of our time, by how we give of our finances, by how we give of our life, Lord. We declare who you are. Thank you, Father, for blessing us abundantly. And Lord, as we bring the tithe and the offering in this morning, we declare your word shall go to the four corners of the earth, that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, Lord God. Your kingdom come, your will be done on the earth as it already is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can bring your tithe and your offering. Give online. All right, so we're, we've been camped out in Mark 4. And the, Jesus has been talking about seed, right? Seed and soil, seed and soil. Um, and how his kingdom just expands and grows. And sometimes we're not even, well, I think most of the time, we're not even sure how it happens. It just happens, Right? And he said the farmer plants a seed and goes, goes to bed, and it just it grows, right? And I think there's an aspect, um, I, I know there's an aspect, um, that the Lord is inviting us into a personal discussion with him in every situation. You know, the place that I get really dangerous is when I have it figured out and I don't have to ask him. Because... Because last time he said this, 
So I don't have to go back and ask again because he always wants me to do that. The problem is the scripture doesn't, that doesn't hold up. Right? And in the, in the two major um, aspects of that is sometimes the Lord says, rise up and fight. Doesn't he? When you, when you read scripture, sometimes he says, do. And sometimes he says, sit and watch. And I'm going to do it. Now, do you know the difference? No, because there's no pattern. The pattern is, do what the Lord says do. But we have to do what the Lord says to do now. What's he saying now? Do you know religion always reveres and honors yesterday's word? But it always rejects today's word. When Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, he said, you, you kill the prophets. You, your, your children, you killed the prophets. And, and, and no prophet, it was better that, or he said, that they would be killed in Jerusalem. The city who kills the prophets. But in Jesus' day, who were they honoring? Their interpretation of the prophets. Well, Moses, you think you're greater than Moses? You think you're greater than Elijah? You think you... Did, I'm going to step into it for just a second. Do you know the hymns that are so revered were blasphemy when they were written? Do you know that? Jesus Loves Me was one of the most controversial songs ever written because it wasn't in the Bible. It wasn't a psalm straight out of the scripture. It was a new song. And those holy hymns, and I love them. I, I, I still have them. I, I'll find myself going down the road singing a hymn. I don't have a problem with hymns. I have a problem with elevating hymns to something that they're not. And the elevation is that, well, this is the only way. You have to, okay. okay. Most of the hymns that I grew up singing were written and put to tunes that were played in the saloons. Do you know that? They, it, was, it was the music that was common, and so it was, they were written to bar tunes. So in the day, they were rejected because they were used by the people who were out in the frontier, who were out spreading the gospel, going out into this wild, untamed... Because you understand the people who went west were doing it to get away from civili civilization and religion. When, when you talk about a pioneer spirit, part of the pioneer spirit is just flat rebellion. <laughs> Tammy and I were talking about this. You know, like Australia... Australia was the, the, the fundamental ground of um, foundation of Australia is criminals. Did you know that? Like England kicked them out of the country and sent them to Australia. Okay. The foundation of this nation is rebellion against authority. I know it was just 4th of July. I get it. I get it. But, but we need to watch ourselves. And, and overcome a spirit of rebellion against all authority. It's in our, it's in our nation's DNA. Let's get back in the scripture. So God's kingdom is spreading and taking over the earth, according to Scripture. And the spreading and the taking over, here we go, is a new thing. 
in a new thing is always something that hasn't been done that way before. And so going back to what, where, where I was going, religion says, no, that's not the way it's done. You, we don't sing Michael W. Smith, we sing Fanny Crosby. Does anybody have any idea what I just said? Fanny J. Crosby. If you sang the hymns, I, I remember there was a big discussion about whether it was okay to sing the new ones that were in the back of the hymnal. Like the hymnal only went from 100 to 800, and we bought a new one, and it had, nine, or eight, nine, it had 901, through, it had all these new songs in the back. It's like, hmm. And all us young folks, we loved all those in the back. We'd have special nights where we could just sing the songs in the back. It's a new thing that may offend me. Is, does God have permission to do a new thing that may offend you? Lord, you have permission to do a new thing. It ain't the way I do it. And I refuse to be offended. All right, so verse 33, Mark 4, 33. Jesus used many parables such as these as he taught the people, and they learned according to their ability to understand. He never spoke to them without using parables, but would wait until they were alone before he explained their meaning to his disciples. There is, there is something so fundamental to a walk with the Lord in that. And that he speaks to us in a mystery. He, he does. He, he speaks to us in dreams. He speaks to us in visions. We all... Have you ever gotten the whole, like, Lord told you something and you have the beginning to the end and everything? Go ahead. Because that's not what happens with me. He speaks and, and we feel like, I think the Lord is leading in this, but I'm, and I've got, and because everything with him is an invitation to have a conversation. So he, he says, hey, I need you to load up in your car and you're going to drive. I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't even know where we're going. I'm not going to do that. And you miss it. The invitation to say, well, Lord, yes, Lord, where? And he may say to Chicago, or he may say, just take a left. Okay, Lord, where? Take a right. Okay, Lord, where? Because it's the invitation is to not stand at the base of the mountain saying, Moses, you go. And you tell us, and we'll just do what you say. The invitation is from the Lord for each of us individually to hear from him and to move in what he says. So it says, later, in humility, it doesn't say the word humble here, but I, in humility, the disciples would stick around and say, I, we, we don't understand what you said. And he would never get mad. He would talk to them. Now, when they went off and tried to do it themselves without asking him, he would, he, yeah, he got upset with them a few times. Yeah? All right. All right, so later that day, after it grew dark, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to, y'all with me? Let's cross over where? Other side of the lake. Notice he didn't say, let's cross over and sink in the middle of the lake. He said clearly, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. Okay. That was the last thing Jesus said. All right, next verse. After they had sent the crowd away, they shoved off from the shore with him and... Uh, as he had been teaching from the boat, and there were other boats that sailed with them. I've never seen that. They just added that in the Bible this week. Has anyone else ever seen that there were other boats? 
There were other boats. In this instance, there were other boats. Okay, so next verse. Suddenly, as they were crossing the lake, a ferocious tempest arose with violent winds and waves that were crashing into the boat until it was all but swamped. Okay, so I don't think anyone pictured when Jesus said we're going to the other side that in, in the wording here, I've been taught the wording here actually refers to something almost like it's a supernatural demonic storm. Okay, it's, it's, it's demonic opposition, uh, opposition to what's taking place. Okay? How, how does the devil control weather? And that? I don't know. But, but the wording there, that, that ferocious tempest is given reference to as a demonic attack that's taking place. Okay? And so, you ever been in a storm? You, you ever had the Lord tell you something and as you began to move in that, it was like, we use the word, all hell came against me? That's what's going on here. Lord said something, now all hell's coming against them. Okay. Next verse. But. Jesus is asleep in the boat. It says he's calmly sleeping in the stern. Resting on a cushion. Does Jesus seem concerned about the storm? Does Jesus seem concerned about the scheme of the devil? Here's why. Jesus trusts his word. Jesus trusts his word. What did you say, Chippy? He had what? Jesus has peace. In his word, he has peace. And it doesn't matter what the outside circumstances are. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. Because I promise you, if he's laying there, he can feel the boat. They're, they're ter terrified they're going to die. And he's thinking, what a nice <laughs> rocking motion. So they shook him awake. We have to see there, the disciples see Jesus, and they see Jesus is in the wrong posture. He's in a posture of rest. They need him in a posture of doing something. Teacher, don't you even care that we're all about to die? Okay. So if they know him and trust him, do they, do they think that he sent them out in the lake to die? He didn't. He said, we're going to the other side. But the circumstances have caused them to doubt his word. And now that they're doubting his word, they're filled with anxiety, fear, and worry. It's much easier for us to talk about they than me. They are doubting his word, and so now they're in a place of anxiety, worry, and fear. Fully awake, he rebuked the storm and shouted to the sea, Hush, calm down. And all at once the wind stopped howling and the water became perfectly calm. Don't go to the next verse. So the circumstance that was causing their fear and anxiety is now <laughs> gone. So they should have peace, right? Right? In, in the, right? You're broke. You can't pay your rent. Someone walks up and hands you the money to pay your rent. You got peace again. Why? Because my peace and my trust isn't in the Lord. My peace and my trust is in the money that's in my hand. And the lack of money in my hand now causes me to have anxiety, fear, and worry. So where's my trust? Is it in God or is it in money? If you can't say amen, just say, oh, that's me. Just, it's okay. It's okay. The Lord's, the Lord's inviting us into a deeper 
deeper place with him. So now everything stops. It's perfectly calm. The circumstance has become calm. Next verse. Then he turned to his disciples and said to them, Why are you so afraid? Haven't you learned to trust yet? That's where I'm coming from. That's where I believe the Holy Spirit is leading. Haven't you learned to trust yet? If you haven't, that's why you're so afraid. We are the most affluent country on the planet. And we take 90% of the anxiety medication of the world. So having stuff must not fix it. We're not in a country that is ravaged by civil war. We're not in a Mexico's not lobbing rockets at us. And we're taking more anxiety meds than Ukraine. Why? Because we haven't learned to trust yet. There's a scripture in Psalms, and, and it's, it, it's, it's part of my sleep medication. And, and my version, my translation of it says, Lord, I can trust in you, so sleep comes quickly. Lord, I, I can trust in you. I trust who you are. And so sleep comes upon me quickly. I used to not be able to go to sleep. Tammy now makes fun of me. Because I'm like, I get it. <laughs> you, ever, you ever had the I can't go to sleep because my brain won't shut down? Yeah, you're, you're carrying a load that ain't yours. I've done it. The whole purpose of Shabbat, a seventh day of rest, is the declaration that God is God and I'm not. And I can take a whole day off and the world's okay. If you can't take a day off, you have a misunderstanding of how important you are. Jesus turns to his disciples and says, why are you so afraid? Haven't you learned to trust yet? Now, the, the funny thing about religion is there's a bad situation. It's causing me fear and anxiety. I go to the Lord and say, Lord, I need you to do something about it. And the Lord does something about it. We would call that intercession. Right? That's like what we're taught to do. Bad situation? Go to the Lord. Ask the Lord. You may have to shake him and wake him up because he's asleep. He stands up. He handles the situation. Ha ha, what faith I have. I went to the Lord. Except Jesus rebuked him. He says, where's your faith? Well, Lord, I thought we're supposed to come to you with prayers and intercession. Well, you are, and that is a level. But there's another level that is you can just trust in me. And, I, and I, don't, I don't have to come to the Lord and ask him to change the circumstance because I, I trust him through the circumstance. Uh, imagine, imagine how the, ride, the boat ride changes. If the apostles in the boat know there's no chance we're going to sink. There's no chance we're even going to We're going to the other side. Then it turns into, look how far I can hang out the side of the boat. Woo! Right? Terrifying things that we do to entertain ourselves called roller coasters. 
right? We, we, we want the, the thing that can get the most adrenaline, get us going the most. Why? Because we know at the end that sucker's going to come back to the place that they picked us up and drop us back off again, hopefully. <laughs> right? So, so what was a terrifying storm becomes a wonderful adventure. I heard it said that what was a terrifying boat ride could become a wonderful adventure. And the only thing that changed was my mind. We go from fear and anxiety to worry about, I don't know how this is going to, I don't know how we're going to do, I don't, I don't, to... I wonder how the Lord's going to do this one. <laughs> the thing that is so sad is in the modern church, in the American church, that is so far-fetched. Because we're pioneers and rebellions and we do pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. Well, you need to do that when the Lord says to do that. But sometimes he says sit and watch. And I know for me, when I get too bootstrap oriented, he'll cut my legs out from under me and say, sit and watch. <laughs> and I get to go to my wife squalling because I lost, uh, I, look, I, I could have written a book on how to do the stock market, how to buy high and sell low. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm, I mean, lost more money than I, I had. That's possible in the market. You can lose more money than you actually had in the market. And I get to go to my wife because it was out of order. It was all jacked up. And I'm like, I lost all our money and we owe. And she didn't leave me or nothing. She could. I'm. And we repent. We, I repented. We put our trust in the Lord. And it was all back in like, six months and I don't even know how I, today I can't tell you how he did it so I, I know what I'm talking about about getting out there on your own why are you so afraid are you trying to do it yourself haven't you learned to trust me yet? Why are you so afraid? Are you believing the lies of the devil? Haven't you learned to trust me yet? What are you so worried about? What are you trying to build that I'm not building? What are you trying to accomplish that I didn't ask you to accomplish? You know, one of the, one of the worst places that we see that is actually in ministry. And, and I think people who love God, call by God, and, and, and get into ministry, and then somehow have a bunch of people, and then all of a sudden, well, Okay, well, we need to, for the Lord, we need to grow this and have, the, and, and grow this ministry. My, my, and then about my ministry, and you see what happened? It went from his ministry to my ministry. Trying to grow my ministry. Trying to build my kingdom. And then, and then somebody rises up in the church in opposition and the church splits and you devastate it. Because your kingdom just got split. Wasn't your kingdom. Wasn't your church. I, I praise God for Mike Mele in my life. Told, told me 20 years ago, Pastor, people come and people go. And in many cases, it has nothing to do with you. So don't pat yourself on the back too, bit, too much when they come 
And don't kick yourself in the butt too hard when they leave. People come, people go. Love them while they're there. Love them when they go. That's, that's contrary to me building a ministry. I've, I've actually been to a conference and, they, and one of the classes was how to close the back door of your church. How to close the back door of your church. Because people are always coming in, and if you could just close the back door and keep the ones you got plus the ones coming in, now you get to grow something. It didn't seem unreasonable to me at the time. How to close the, oh yeah, how to, what am I doing wrong that people, you know, how to, how to. So then, pastors are one of the occupations that have the highest rate of burnout. That's crazy. That's crazy. Why? Because you're carrying something that ain't yours to carry. Don't worry, I'm wrapping up. I promise. All right, next. So Jesus speaks. The circumstance is taken care of, but they're overwhelmed with fear and awe. And said to one, one another, who is this man who has such authority that even the winds and the waves obey? Sometimes we just like to fear. We just like to have anxiety. Everything's taken care of, Jesus in the boat, and now they got fear over Jesus being in the boat. Understand when I say these things, I'm not picking on these guys because, like, they're the apostles. They all died for the gospel. Okay? I'm, I'm in no way comparing me to them. What I'm looking at is, okay, as they learned this walk with Jesus, what is it in my life that I need to make this application so that I can get to where they got to? Okay? I, I'm... I'm not one of these guys that picks on Peter for getting out of the boat and sinking. He got out of the boat, and he walked on the water. But when did he sink? Oh, when he took his eyes off of Jesus. When he quit trusting in Jesus, he began to sink. But he knew, Lord, save me. Woo. Here's the point. They're in a storm. Jesus, don't you care that we perish? Lord, save us. Peace be still. What are you worried about? Peter's walking with the Lord. He takes his eye off. He begins, Lord, save me. Jesus, why did you quit trusting? I think the rebuke from the Lord is, if we will keep our trust and our faith in him, we have a lot less of those crying out in anxiety and despair prayers. Because we're just, we're in peace. And we don't pray from anxiety, fear. He's, he's a loving God. He answers them. Man, he answers them. But he's saying, hey, there's a higher level. And there's a place of praying from victory instead of praying for victory. And, and, and so then, then I can move to a place that I'm not constantly praying for the Lord to deliver me from my own self. And I can actually begin to deliver other, I, I can be a deliverer. I can, I can go and spread the kingdom. Because as we began today, anxiety and fear is transferable. If you don't believe it, watch the news. They, they, they make money off of making sure that you have enough anxiety and fear that you need to tune in after the commercial break to see what's about to happen. Okay? Are we? Don't believe me? I got one word for you. Barrel. We've been hearing about barrel for two weeks. Not barrel like a barrel of monkeys or barrel. Burl. Burl. The storm. 
right? Because when there's a storm, more people watch the Weather Channel. And if a storm that you think might impact you, you're more likely to watch the Weather Channel. And the more people that watch, they actually raise their advertising rates during storms. Did you know that? They, they actually make more money as a network because they know more people are watching when there's fear and anxiety that they can seed you with. So what would happen? What would happen if a group of people in Amy, Louisiana decided, Lord, I put my trust in you and sleep comes quickly. Lord, I put my trust in you. I won't have fear. I won't have anxiety. No matter what the doctor says, no matter what the news broadcast says, no matter what my family says, no matter what any of these things that try to cause me, no matter what happens at work, I shall not be moved. And Lord, I will rest when you say rest. And I will fight when you say fight. And then I'll rest when you say rest. And I'll fight when you say fight. But whether I'm resting or whether I'm fighting, I'm at peace. Just stand up if you want some of that. Peace is a choice. So this day, I choose to trust you, Lord. If I feel myself getting upset, anxious, fearful, I drop to my knees. I don't cry out in anxiety for you to fix the situation. I drop to my knees and say, Lord, help me trust you more. Help me trust you more. One of those old great hymns, Oh, that I would trust you more. Jesus says, my peace I give you. My peace I leave with you. As you enter a house, release my peace. And if it's not received and it comes back upon you, take that peace and walk right back out the door. But if my peace rests upon that place, then you rest upon it. Father, we go from this place with your peace, your spirit, your life, your light, and your joy. We look forward to the adventure. We look forward to the adventure. Is there anybody looking forward to the adventure? We look forward to the adventure. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning.